I'm going to take, first of all, and wet my paper. This particular painting is a tropical scene. And in the sky, we're going to have a nice, bright sunset sky. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dry that area, come back in later, and then we're going to start adding layers of darks to it. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to wet the entire paper. It's important to note that you wet everything. Don't leave any dry places in your sky, okay? So let's make sure that we got it wet. And just take that brush and slap that color on, and don't worry about getting water everywhere. Let's go ahead and come on down to basically almost to the edge where you see sort of a, an area where the, uh, the grass starts down here, but leave some white space. So I'm not going to wet this area down in here. I'm going to leave about two and a half to three inches right along this area. Now the rest of it up here is soaking wet. Now watch what I do. I'm going to start out with my lemon yellow. I'm going to mix up a little bit in my palette, and then I'm going to take with my large brush, which is in my starter kit, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to start adding in some yellow, just like this. And again, this is an opportunity for you to get real sloppy and have a lot of fun. But remember, I'm leaving a lot of white space along the base of this. I'm going to have grass in this area that's going to be much darker. Now, clean out your brush thoroughly, and then come up and get some of the permanent red deep. This is a a uh, primary red, which means that it's friendly to blue and also friendly to yellow, which is important. Now I'm going to take some of this color and I'm going to come right in and I'm overlapping the color with the yellow. See how I do that? And bring the red up quite a ways if you wish. Now remember, if this is wet, I can move this color around all day long. I don't have a problem with that. Let me take and dry, uh, clean out the brush again. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to get some of my ultramarine blue deep. So I'm going to put some of that color out, and then I'm going to paint at the top of the paper the dark part of the sky. So I'm going from white to yellow to red to blue, basically warm to cool, light to dark. Notice that, warm to cool, light to dark. So I've got my blue up at the top. And don't be shy now. Put a nice uh, sufficient amount of dark up here at the top. Don't do it too waterly, watery, just like so. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to tilt the paper. I'm going to take advantage of gravity. I'm going to let the yellow and the red run this way so that I have a graduation or a gradation. I don't want, I don't want the colors to look like a flag where the colors stop and start. So I must move this, let it run, okay? Not a problem, just let it run. As long as it's wet, you can do this all day long. So I'm taking advantage of gravity. I hope you can see that on the camera now. See how I'm doing that? And whatever you do, try to avoid touching the sky. I'm going to clean out my brush and just put water on now. Now what I want to do is I'm going to come in and just sort of blend some of the red into the blue and the red, I mean the red into the yellow and then the red into the blue. So I pulled some of the red down into my yellow here. And again, I'm letting it all just run together like so and I'm trying to avoid or get rid of a line. So I have red down into the yellow, yellow into the red. I have red up into the blue and blue into the, into the red. So I have it nice and wet and I can do this all day long. Let me take, put a little more color at the top. And this is exactly how I got this effect in the sky. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Okay, but when you get it to the point where you feel comfortable with it, where you have a gr nice gradation of yellow to red to blue, then you would lay it flat and let it dry. Okay, now let's go ahead and just let it run just a little bit more. And see how smoothly that runs now? I've got the red coming into my yellow. I'm going to add just a little bit more red down into my yellow area here. Not much, just a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a little more of the red my permanent red deep, just a little bit more. Make sure it's mixed up thoroughly now in your palette because you don't want to get pure pigment on your brush, okay? Because if you do that, you get what's called skid marks, meaning that you have sh pure pigment showing, okay? Now, if you happen to get a little blemish on your uh, paper, meaning a hair or something like that, whatever you do, do not try to pick it off. Leave it on there. When your painting dries, that hair will fall off. We have this marvelous invention, you may have heard of it, called gravity, okay? And what you want to do is let this run like so. You don't want the uh, yellow to be too large an area. You want that to be smaller. 
it's okay if your red's a little larger. It takes a few minutes to do this, okay? So be patient. Be patient with yourself. As long as it's wet, you're safe, okay? You don't have to worry about that, all right? Just another minute with the sky and we'll have it. But I want to make sure, in order for this painting to be successful, we want to make sure that we do this correctly. So I'm just tilting the pa paper, letting it run. Don't be afraid to hold it vertically like that, okay? That will work perfectly for you. All right, now I've got that area where I want it, okay? So I'm gonna take a tissue, in this case, you can just use regular tissues, but make sure you use tissues that do not have any lotion or anything in them. You know you can buy them without lotion. So see how we've got a nice, pretty sky? And also, you may be able to see there's a little hair in there. Once in a while from a natural hairbrush, you'll get a little hair on your paper. Leave it alone. Just let the painting dry, and then when it's dry, that hair will fall off and there won't, it won't leave a mark. But if you start messing with that, remember this paper is very vulnerable when it's wet. It's a very tough paper, but when it's wet, it's vulnerable. It's like an expensive blouse. So whatever you do, don't start picking with it, okay? Now, we want to take this color and transfer it down here into the water somewhat. In other words, we have what's called the sky here. We have a vertical plane, meaning the house. The, uh, the trees and the brush here and trees going up this way. But then we also have what we call the horizontal plane, which is what we're standing on or what we're, uh, if we're in a boat and we're floating on or whatever. It's the ground, it's the driveway, it's the, it's the river, it's the lake, it's the ocean. We've got grass and we've got water here. So what I want to do now is transfer some of the sky color reflecting down into my water area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same colors that I have here and we're simply going to move those colors on down. So I'm going to take yellow down here at the base and just put in a suggestion of some nice warm yellow to start with. Not a lot. Then I'm going to come in, clean out my brush, take a little bit of my red, and likewise put just a little bit of a red down in here. Okay, see how we've done that? Yellow to red to blue, yellow to red to blue. Okay, now once we do this, then we'll take just a moment and we'll dry this just a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll start adding a second layer. So the idea is in your painting you want to work from your lightest values to your darkest values. Now next to this area here we're going to put just a little bit of a blue area there. So we're starting out with an underpainting. In other words, this is the first value. Then we'll get darker in the sky, we'll get darker in the water and so forth. But it's important to note that you build your painting in layers. You start out with your lightest values, then you go to your mid-tones, then you go to your darks. Try to remember that because if you can learn that one thing, you'll make your painting process much simpler. Okay? And a lot of times when you start looking, you're adding detail in the beginning and you find out at the end you really didn't need that detail. It all automatically happens by magic. All right, so we're at a stage now where we want to almost get ready to dry this. I'm going to pick up a little smaller brush. I want to take a little bit of my yellow, and we'll put a little bit of that yellow over into the grass area as well. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to move on to a new color. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my Hooker Green Deep, and watch what happens now when I add my yellow to it. I get a nice, pretty, uh, sort of a light springtime, the, those color of the leaves in springtime, that light yellow. And I've got a little bit of that. We're going to add just a little bit of this in. Now you're, you're probably saying to yourself, wow, this looks like a lot of fun, and I think I can do that. Guess what? You're better than you think you are. You can do this, okay? So be patient with yourself. Have a little fun. As long as you remember that you build your painting in stages, you'll have great success. All right. Now, we're at a stage now where we want to go ahead and dry this. Once it's dry, we'll come back and I'll show you how to start adding your mid-tones in this, in this painting. And then we'll dry it again and then we'll go to our darks eventually. Okay? But you can already see, look at the pretty colors that you have now. Nice and fresh, nice and clean. Just a little review. You wet your sky thoroughly, leaving this area white down here. Then what you do is you add your yellow to red to blue. Work with that as long as you feel necessary so that you have a gradation from yellow to red to blue. That's important. <laughs>